I'm AJ, sitting right over here. And in this scene, I want to tell you about my insane teacher, who taught me how to memorize the cytokines. Although my teacher is insane, which is the reason why Sarah and I are the only students who usually show up to class, she teaches the material in an extremely memorable way. I recall the time that she brought her monster to class to teach us about the immunoglobulins. But today, she had something else in mind. Who wants to come up to the front of the class today? How about you, Sarah? I am so sorry, Professor. I need to use the bathroom. Okay, well, be back as soon as you can. I guess that leaves just you, AJ. Um, what are you, what are you gonna do today, Professor? Step right up and I'll show you. So, she had me strap up into her special chair, and she had me take off my hat so she could attach the headpiece. Are you ready? Um, yes, Professor. When I opened my eyes, I realized I was no longer in the classroom. But it seemed as though I was standing on top of a store, which was apparently called the Cytokine Store. My teacher apparently transported my mind to the Cytokine Store. So of course, I decided to go inside. Now, before I describe to you what I saw in each individual aisle, let me just give you an overview on the layout of the store. There were 10 aisles in this store. I could already tell where my professor was going with this. Aisle 1 was supposed to represent Aisle 1. Aisle 2 was supposed to represent Aisle 2, and so forth. Let me start with what I saw in Aisle 1, and then we're going to get to the rest of the aisles. And at the end, we're going to get to the parking lot where we're going to talk about even more cytokines. So in Aisle 1, I saw a man with a gun, and every time he would shoot, fire would come out of his gun. The gun reminded me of one. Gun for one, and the fire of the inflammation, which reminded me that IL-1 stimulates inflammation, and it does this by promoting vasodilation and capillary permeability. And what was the man shooting? The random skeleton in the aisle. And he would explode the skeleton with his bullets. The skeleton exploding reminds us of bone resorption, that IL-1 promotes bone resorption through osteoclast activating factor. Now, there was a thermometer randomly on top of this skeleton over here, held down by adhesive tape. The thermometer reminds us of the fever, as IL-1 is a pyrogen which leads to fever through production of PGE-2. And the tape reminds us of the adhesion, that IL-1 activates endothelium to express adhesion molecules. So just to review, IL-1 is responsible for stimulating inflammation, for promoting bone resorption, for producing a fever, and for activating endothelium to express adhesion molecules. Before we get to IL-2, we note this macrophage guy randomly on the floor over here. This macrophage guy is going to represent cytokines secreted by macrophages. So we're going to see this macrophage guy in IL-1, IL-6, and in other aisles as we'll see soon. Let me describe to you now what I saw in IL-2. In IL-2, I found this shoe. Shoe for two. And out of the shoe, there was some sort of force field coming out. And teacups were being created. All different sorts of teacups. So this shoe over here reminds us of two. This is how I remembered we were talking about aisle two. And the various teacups reminded me that aisle two stimulates growth of T lymphocytes. Cytotoxic T cells, helper T cells, and regulatory T cells. And the scary natural killer guy over here, I didn't know any other way to describe him other than natural killer, Actually, it says natural killer on him. Reminded me also that IL-2 stimulates natural killer cells. So just to review, IL-2, represented by the shoe over here, stimulates the production of all different types of T-cells, as well as natural killer cells. I was ready to move on to IL-3. In IL-3, I found this tree. Tree for three. And through some sort of force coming out of the tree, it was promoting growth of this random bone marrow model over here. So again, the tree was stimulating the bone marrow to grow, which reminded me that IL-3 supports growth and differentiation of bone marrow stem cells, which is similar in function to GMCSF, which is used in the treatment of leukopenia. I was now ready to move on to IL-4. The door over here blocking aisle 4 reminded me we were talking about aisle 4. Door for 4. And the door said beg for help. Maybe there was someone behind this door begging for help. But I don't see him here anymore. Anyway, beg for help is going to help us remember different features of aisle 4. B is going to be for B cells. That aisle 4 promotes growth of B cells. E is going to be for IgE, and G for IgG. That IL-4 enhances class switching to IgE and IgG, and HELP for helper T-cells. 
Th helper T cells. That IL-4 induces differentiation of T cells into Th helper T cells. I was now ready to move on to IL-5. In IL-5, I found the hive. This huge hive blocking the aisle. So hive reminded me I was in IL-5. The hive said the beehive or the bay hive. It wasn't a beehive, it was a bay hive. Bay is going to help us remember different features of IL-5. B for B cells, that IL-5 promotes growth and differentiation of B cells. A, that it enhances class switching to IgA. And E, for isinophils, that IL-5 stimulates growth and differentiation of isinophils. These isinophils are of course important in the immune response against parasitic worms, as well as their role in diseases like allergic asthma. And now I was ready to move on to IL-6 on the second floor. IL-6 was actually being blocked by the sticks, but this worked that well because sticks reminded me of six. So I recalled we were in aisle six. Now there was a fire in this aisle over here, maybe from the gun of the shooter underneath in aisle one. This fire reminds us of inflammation, that aisle six, just like aisle one, promotes inflammation through vasodilation and increased capillary permeability. And the thermometer over here, inside of this cute protein shake over here, reminded me of two things. The thermometer reminded me of the fever, that IL-6, like IL-1, produces a fever through production of PGE-2. And the acute protein shake. Acute protein shake reminded me of acute phase proteins. That IL-6 stimulates production of acute phase proteins. And we see over here the macrophage. He's really sad because he can't open up the protein shake. This macrophage over here, again, reminds us of cytokines that are secreted by macrophages. So IL-6, just like IL-1, is secreted by macrophages. I was now ready to move on to IL-7. In IL-7, I found the 7-up seven can. 7-up seven for 7. This reminded me I was in IL-7. And stuck inside the top of the 7-up can was this poster over here showing stem cell differentiation along both the myeloid and the lymphoid pathways. And the lymphoid side was circled, which reminded me that IL-7 is responsible for stimulating lymphoid progenitor cells into mature lymphocytes. Now I was ready to go to IL-8. In IL-8, I found this mess of eight balls on the floor. Eight balls for eight. This reminded me that I was in IL-8. And the janitor over here is not a normal janitor. He is actually a neutrophil. And over here, he's really angry because he was called in to clean up the aisle eight. So this neutrophil janitor over here, who's really upset that he needs to clean up the mess in aisle eight, reminds us that aisle eight is responsible for recruiting neutrophils to clear up infections. So again, clean up on aisle eight reminds us that neutrophils are recruited by aisle eight to clear up infections. And the macrophage that we see, who is really scared over here because he's worried he's going to be cleaned up by the neutrophil, reminds us that IL-8, just like IL-1 and IL-6, is secreted by macrophages. I was now ready to move on to IL-9. But luckily, IL-9 was empty. I guess my teacher didn't care if I learned about IL-9. Maybe there's no such thing as IL-9. Or maybe it's just so unimportant, I don't need to learn about it. So let's move on instead to IL-10. In IL-10, I saw this fireman, but it was actually a hen. Hen for 10. This reminded me I was in IL-10. And the fireman, who likes putting out fires, reminded me of the role of IL-10, that it attenuates the inflammatory response, which is basically the job of a fireman. And this fireman over here always likes to have nearby his betta fish that's tagged. This betta fish always has this tag on it. Tagged betta fish for TGF-beta. This is actually another cytokine, TGF-beta. And TGF-beta, just like IL-10, attenuates the immune response. Attenuation of the immune response is important, of course, for wound healing. And IL-10 specifically attenuates the immune response by decreasing the expression of MHC class 2 and TH1 cytokines. It also inhibits activated macrophages and dendritic cells. I was now ready to move on to IL-12. There actually was no IL-12. It instead was a clock set to 12 o'clock. This reminded me of aisle 12. And this clock wouldn't have a normal alarm. Instead, it would scream, The natural killers have won. The natural killers have won. Let's take a look at what this clock was saying. Natural killers have won. Natural killer for natural killer cells. And have won for TH1. This reminds us of the two functions of aisle 12. It activates natural killer cells, and it promotes differentiation of TH1 cells. And the macrophage that we see over here screaming on top of the alarm clock, I guess he's really bothered by the noises that it makes, reminds us that IL-12, just like IL-1, IL-6, and IL-8, is secreted by macrophages. It's now time to move to the parking lot to speak about a few more cytokines. This was the weirdest part of the scene, where I saw an elephant in the parking lot 
standing on top of a tuna fish can. Tuna fish elephant for TNF Alpha. This reminded me that this part of the parking lot was about TNF Alpha. On the tuna fish can, it said something interesting. It said, end white-haired Granny Kachexia. I guess the person in charge of this tuna fish company has some complex about white-haired Granny Kachexia, and he wants to put an end to it. So end white-haired Granny Kachexia is going to help us remember different features of TNF Alpha. End for endothelium. That TNF Alpha activates endothelium. White for white blood cells. That TNF Alpha causes white blood cell recruitment. Granny for granulomas. That TNF alpha maintains granulomas, for example, in tuberculosis. And cachexia for cachexia. That TNF alpha causes cachexia in malignancy. And the vascular leak that we see on the floor over here reminds us of vascular leak. That TNF alpha leads to vascular leak. And again, the thermometer reminds us that TNF alpha can mediate fever. And again, the macrophage that we see over here. I guess he wants tuna fish and the elephant is not letting him have it. This macrophage reminds that TNF alpha, just like IL 1 and IL 6 and IL 8 and IL 12, is secreted by macrophages. I was now ready to take a look at the next part of the parking lot. And as I took a closer look at this gum over here, I took a look at this infinity gum over here. It's apparently this huge piece of gum in the shape of infinity. Infinity gum for interferon gamma. This part of the parking lot reminds me of interferon gamma. And the infinity gum was shooting the macrophages that I saw in the scene. This reminded me that interferon gamma stimulates macrophages to kill phagocytosed pathogens. And actually, under the gum was this shoe over here. Shoe for two. And this reminded me that interferon gamma inhibits differentiation of Th2 cells. And the G on the gum for gamma reminds me that interferon gamma induces IgG isotype switching in B cells. So that was it for the cytokine store. I know what you might be thinking. What about interferon alpha and interferon beta? Why didn't my professor have anything in the scene representing this? I guess she just expected me to realize that interferons interfere. That interferons interfere with both RNA and DNA viruses. This is why they're used in leukemias, hepatitis B virus, and Kaposi sarcoma, as well as renal cell carcinoma and malignant melanoma. Actually, I think I know the reason why my teacher didn't want me to learn about the interferons. She didn't want me to have to think about the adverse effects of interferons. Flu-like symptoms, depression, neutropenia, myopathy, and interferon-induced autoimmunity. Yeah, that's probably why. I think I was now ready to come back to the classroom. I opened my eyes, and I felt so good about myself that I now have memorized the cytokines. I hope you enjoyed my story, and I hope you learned a lot. Alrighty, take care.